Greetings family, I am here again. For those who don't know me, my name is Michael. The Lord wants me to share another Bible study. This is for the encouragement of the Bride of Christ. According to the Bible, there is more than one harvest. Try not to fall asleep because the church as a whole, according to the scriptures, will be sleeping when the wedding takes place in heaven. The Lord, brothers and sisters, won't be waiting any longer for those who do not believe in biblical truth. As I said before, there is no personal interpretation of the scriptures. Please listen to this Bible study to understand better a topic than most pastors never talk about. Stay tuned for more biblical truth. Please help us to continue doing more videos and keep the channel running. I appreciate your support. Please like, share, and subscribe. God bless you all. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about the timing of the harvest in the end of the world, the reapers, the time of the reapers, the angels coming forth to gather out the wheat versus the tares. It's very important you understand the timing of this. And uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at. So we begin in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not, did not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for truth. We thank you for giving us insight and understanding of your word. God, we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord that you will open your people's eyes, open their hearts to understand truth. We ask God for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that breaks the yoke, that destroys the yoke, Lord, so that this word will penetrate 
get into the hearts of your people. We plead, Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ as we minister your word. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Praise God. So, Jesus says, let the tares and the wheat grow together. We need to understand the difference between the wheat harvest and the barley harvest if we're going to understand the timing when these things will take place. So let's take a look at the whiteboard. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let's take a look at the whiteboard here. All right. Hope you can see this. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to look at. Try to get the microphone out of the way here. Notice here the barley. The barley is sown in the fall. Before we go into that, I, I'd actually like you to see this. This is quite remarkable. I want you to notice the seasons. Fall, winter, spring, and summer. Just as we have, right? We have the, the seasons. The fall speaks of the of sin, Adam and Eve, right? The whole human race fell because of sin. Winter, or excuse me, winter speaks of death, right? The wages of sin is death. But look. The gift of God, springtime. The gift of God is eternal life. Amen. And then if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and receive this life, this resurrection life of God, summer follows, which is God's wrath, his judgment and his wrath. Are you listening? So the whole plan of God's salvation is in the seasons. Isn't that beautiful? So, notice here, the barley is sown in the fall. In the fall season, the barley is sown, okay? Now the barley will go through the winter, go through the winter, and it will be harvested in the spring. The barley is in the ground through the winter season. I want you to notice something, folks. The wheat harvest is way up here. Okay? And I should have put down when the wheat is sown. Uh, but the wheat the wheat is sown in the uh, in the spring and harvested in the summer. Uh, so anyway, the the barley harvest, as you can see, takes place before the wheat harvest. Okay. So if Jesus is saying that the tares and the wheat take place together, 
and he says, let them grow together, we understand that that's talking about way up here, okay? I want you to understand something, folks. The bride of Christ, the first of the first fruits, they come out right here, okay? The barley harvest is the church during the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour. The barley harvest is the church, but out of the barley harvest is going to come forth a bride or first of the first fruits. This is what the Bible calls the heave offering. All right? So here in this place here, this is, I also want you to notice something. The early rain is needed to sow the barley. Okay, that's Pentecost. The early rain came at Pentecost. What's coming in these last days is called the latter rain. They're both needed for the fullness. Okay? The early rain at Pentecost, that's where the church was birthed. That's where the barley was sown. However, the latter rain... The latter rain is in the hour we're in right now. Amen. The Bible says in the time of latter rain, ask ye rain. This is what we should be doing. We should be asking the Lord for rain. How many know the early rain, the latter rain has to do with the Holy Spirit being poured out? Amen. And so here we see the early rain and the latter rain and they will be together. That's the fullness. And this is this, this springtime life. This is the time we're in right now where the first of the first fruits is going to be taken out. I thought about this afterwards. I should probably put this in, in squares and, and that way you can know in each division or each square, you can see what's happening. You're probably better than this timeline. But we'll uh, use this for now. We're, we'll be doing a whole lot more of these messages because God's people need to understand the timing. How many know the devil would like you to believe the wheat harvest in the tares are over here, right? He'd like to mess up the timing. And that's why you don't hear any ministers talking, really, hardly any ministers talking about the barley harvest. But sadly, you hear no ministers at all out there teaching about the first of the first fruits coming out of the barley harvest. <clears throat> Before there can be, uh, before the harvest can begin of all the harvests, the first harvest is the barley. And before that barley can be harvested, there has to be a first of the first fruits that comes out of that barley. That's the bride of Christ. Once the bride is caught up to God and to his throne, we read about in Revelation 12, then, uh, then the first three and a half years of the tribulation hour begin. Okay? So this right here, first three and a half years, the church as a whole, will still be on the earth. 
and they will have oil in their lamps and even have extra oil because of this latter rain, okay? But notice what happens during the wheat harvest after the church has been caught up. The church has been caught up. Okay, the bride of Christ is caught up here. And the church is going to be caught up here. This summer right here speaks of uh, 12 o'clock. This is midnight. All right? If you're looking at the at the watches that we talked about in the previous message. This is midnight here. So the church will be taken up at midnight, and that begins the wheat harvest. The wheat will be harvested first, and the tares, okay? So this is why Jesus said the angels will come forth, the reapers will come forth, and reap the wheat harvest and gather out the tares and, and burn those tares. That will be after the church. The church will be gone at that point, All right? Then the summer begins. This is God's wrath. And notice this, no rain. No rain, folks. You see in that? No rain. No, no Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit will not be poured out during the last three and a half years. That's going to be really bad on the earth. And this is where we get the harvest of the figs and the harvest of the grapes. This is where the, the seals are being, uh, uh, are being released and the trumpets and the thunders, all of that takes place during this time, all right? So understand here, long before the wheat harvest, this is what I want you to understand, is long before the wheat harvest ever begins, the barley harvest has to take place first, okay? The church is the barley harvest. The bride comes out of the barley harvest as the first of the first fruits, which begins the harvest. So if you're still here during the wheat harvest, you're here during the time when no man is working and the angels will come forth and, and work. It's going to be so bad on the earth that there won't, there won't be anybody working. And this is the time when the remnant of the seed of the church is going to be beheaded during this last three and a half years. But no Holy Spirit, no, no, you know, it even says, he that now letteth will be taken out of the way. That's the Holy Spirit. And then that man of sin will be revealed. Okay? So I hope you understand. I'm trying to help you to understand that you don't, you're not, you know, you're not, if you're in the church, you're not going to be up here with the wheat harvest, all right? The wheat harvest is the end of the world when God will send forth the reapers. So if that's the case, then the tares, how many know tares are not growing with the barley? Tares grow among wheat. This is where the strong delusion is going to take place, folks. Over here. 
All right? So strong the delusion will be that they won't be able to tell the difference between the wheat and the tares. God says, let them grow together. It's going to be very, very uh, dark in that hour. Very dark. So the bride of Christ and the church experiences spring, new life, the latter rain. Now remember, if you don't have the early rain, you can't experience the latter rain. The early rain is what Paul termed as the earnest of the Spirit, or the earnest of our inheritance. Amen. But notice there's no mention here on the board, I guess the Lord... Even in the Bible, you don't see the bride. You have to look for the bride. The bride's hidden. And even on this uh, even on this chart, you don't see the bride here. You just see the barley harvest. She's hidden. She's coming out of the barley harvest. But just you can see how much worse it's going to get here. From the wheat harvest to the figs, the fig speaks of Israel, right? Talks about the figs being harvested. Remember, Jesus came in his ministry, and he could find he could not find any figs, and he cursed the fig tree. The figs will take place after the wheat harvest. Israel. 12,000 from each tribe will be harvested. But then the grap, the excuse me, the grapes. The grapes is the end of the world, the wine press of the Lord. Amen. This is where the trampling of the grapes will take place. Now, you and I and the remnant of her seed that are beheaded, we will return with Christ in the second coming of Christ, and we will trample these grapes. That's the wrath of God that upon the wicked, the nations, rule them with a rod of iron. Amen? Glory, hallelujah. So you can see how bad it's going to get as you, as you watch it's going to progress and get increasingly, increasingly worse. So please understand, please understand that you don't have to be here for the wheat harvest. You're over here. If you're in the church, you're over here. And the reason why the church is going to be still here for the first three and a half years of tribulation hour is because the church fell asleep. But God's going to protect his church. We look at book of Revelation, it says, uh, it says that she fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God for three and a half years from the face of the serpent. And that's where God will nourish the church for three and a half years for time times and a half time, which is three and a half years. But there's something better and that's to be in the bride caught up in, in, in spring. Why would you want to go through three and a half years of persecution why would you want to go through three and a half years of persecution when you can come out here, folks? Why would you want to do that? The church is going to have oil, but the lamps are going to go out. Isn't, isn't God merciful that he's going to protect his church during that time, just before midnight, just before summer begins. 
the wrath of God. God is so merciful, so merciful. You, you got to just understand the tenderness of God, the love of God over his people. That's why when I hear these things in the news about Muslims cutting off the heads of Christians, I no, that's not real Christians. Those aren't the real believers. Those are not the blood washed that are being beheaded. Those are those Catholics calling themselves Christians that are being beheaded. God is going to protect his church, feed them and nourish them keeping them from the face of the serpent during the first three and a half years. Oh, praise the living God. Oh,